We're getting introduced to something this election year that we've never seen in any other election year in history. So it's important that we do these three things related to our investments and our retirement plan. And by doing these three things, we're gonna feel more confident about our financial picture because we're gonna be prepared for whatever happens, for whoever gets elected. Now, number one, it's about what we should expect this year. And then number two and three, we're gonna go over what to actually do about it. And then I actually wanna show you some data on what's happened in the past to the stock market during election years, whether it's been a Democrat who gets elected or a Republican or what Congress, what the makeup of Congress looks like. I'll show you some of the, the stats and facts around that, which could be useful as we head into this year. And by the way, I'm Dave Zoller and I own a retirement planning firm with Tim and our team of specialists. So let's get into number one, which is what to expect this year, the new thing that's being introduced this year we haven't seen before, and then what to do about it. So number one, don't be surprised if we experience higher than normal volatility this election year. It, it happens a lot during election years, and it's not just because of the election uh, in 2024, but it's because of many different factors going on. But the important thing is, if we can expect volatility, then we can be prepared for it. And I'll give you some practical things to do uh, to prepare for it in uh, coming up in this video. Another thing to be prepared for this year is just the sensationalized headlines, right? We're used to it now in the media and all the things going on. We see it all the time, but especially during election years, when the stakes are at their highest, it, I would expect a lot more of it this year because the, the news stations, we know their main goal is to just keep our attention, keep us focused on their channel or on their platform, and they need to sensationalize stories because fear sells. It, that's what keeps people's attention. Now there's something new this year we haven't seen during an election year before, at least a good version of it, uh, but I think we can expect it. And that's the videos in the news or in social media of prominent figures or world leaders doing or saying something that never really happened, but it looks indistinguishable from a real video. And this is due to AI deepfakes, which I believe are gonna be used a lot this year to really sway people's feelings. And this is the year, we, we, we're starting to see them already and, and you still can kind of notice it, but it's getting so advanced so quickly. Uh, this is kind of futuristic, but I would just prepare, be prepared to, to not believe anything that you see right away, hopefully you don't already, but our first reaction to things we see on the internet or on social media should always be one of skepticism. Right, especially this year. Just wait for the facts before believing anything uh, or spreading anything. And just so you know, if a video of me comes out with painted fingernails that are pink and I'm wearing blush, it's totally AI generated, it's not me. Or it might have been from a tea party that I had with my daughter. It's one of those things. But seriously, when it comes to the financial things and investments, just be prepared for a lot of things to make us feel worried or feel like we're not doing the right thing or just, Main thing is don't let it cause us to make any emotional decisions and not smart, logical ones. I remember years ago, an acquaintance of mine in, in the neighborhood that I used to live in came up to me and he knew I was a, a, a retirement planner and it was the day after a presidential election and he said, I just sold everything. I know it's gonna, I'm in all cash. I know everything's gonna go down after what just happened. I can't believe it. Are you doing anything different now with your clients? And I just said, our clients are prepared for both good and, and bad scenarios. And then he gave me some reasons why this president is gonna be horrible for America and things are just gonna be nothing but good from here. And I believe every election in all of history, there's been someone or many people who have been saying that whatever side you're on. But what happened in the following weeks and months and years was the stock market took off in a massively positive direction. So let's not make the same emotional decisions as that guy. Now let's move on to part two and three. What do we do to prepare? And then I'll share some of the, the facts and some of the data around what's happened in past election years so that you can see the pattern that happens here. So in order to prepare, when it comes to our investments, we've got to look at where we are now first. We need to look at the current allocation and, and how you're invested. And you might have an idea, but if you're not sure, uh, if you've got a retirement advisor, talk to them, get the update. And if you don't have one, check out PortfolioVisualizer.com and then click on the tools section in the top right and then back test portfolio. This is a free tool you can use to plug in, uh, whether it's your 401k statement or IRA statement, whatever it is, plug in some of the ETF ticker symbols or the names of the, the funds that you have to get an idea of how you're invested. That's a pretty easy to use tool. Hopefully you can look at that, look at how you're currently invested. And then once you do, then the next step is look at how much you have in the conservative bucket. At a high level here, when I say conservative bucket, imagine you've got two buckets. One is conservative assets, and then one is growth or that's often the, the stocks 
bucket, right? And as you're looking at the tool or talking to your advisor, see how much you've got in cash or certain fixed income investments that shouldn't fluctuate as much as the growth assets should. And then if you go a little bit deeper, so you've got these two buckets, one's the conservative bucket, and I'll explain a little bit more of the theory here, but look at that, that conservative bucket of cash and, and some bonds, but be aware the, of the bonds that don't act like bonds. We've seen a lot of people get caught off guard because they think that they're holding bonds that belong in their conservative bucket, but the investments fluctuate almost like a stock does. And if you're using Portfolio Visualizer, you can see the recent history of each investment to see how it performed over the last few years. And the year to pay attention to is 2022. That will be a key year to look at what are the conservative or the what you think is a conservative bucket and look at those investments in there. How did they perform in 2022? Just something that will give you, shed some light on, on you know, what really is in the conservative bucket versus the growth bucket. And here's a way to think about how much do I hold in the conservative bucket? Now, this is a nuanced answer because a lot of retirement success depends on your growth rate and your asset allocation. But one way to think about the conservative bucket and, and what's in there is not how much money is in there, what's the total amount, but how many number of years of withdrawals would that conservative bucket provide you if you had to just take from that bucket? For example, pretend I needed to take out $10,000 a year from my investment accounts. And I, I look at Portfolio Visualizer, I determine how much I've got in cash and some of these, uh, the, these less risky bonds here, and I've got 100K in my conservative bucket. Well, rather than just looking at the value of $100,000, look at it as 10 years worth of withdrawals I can access that shouldn't be as impacted by the market swings. That's the way, rather than dollar amount, look at number of years of safe assets is kind of the, the, the thought there. That can give some peace of mind as you're, you're looking over the next few years. And remember too, there is a downside. Sometimes we see as you get closer to retirement, you move a lot more into the conservative uh, bucket, but there's a downside to holding too much in cash and conservative assets, especially if there's an incredible bull market that takes place this year or any some year in the future. So there's a balance, there's something, there's an amount that's right for each individual or couple on, on, on what to do and how much to hold. And it really depends on your income plan first, getting that set and then figuring out what to hold in the conservative bucket. But one, one note on, on cash here, it's true no one wants to hold cash during a bull market, you know, if we go through one or a well-performing market, because it's so clear during that year or number of years, how much you're missing out on when everything else is going up and you've got cash at whatever interest rate that it is. But if you can determine the right amount for your specific situation, and then think about, pretend the stock market goes up or the stock, uh, pretend your growth assets go up 10% each year for the next few years and cash only was returning 4%. Well, your first thought is I'm missing out on 6%. That's a 6% gap, right? That I'm missing out on. But think about cash as being the thing that allows us not to have to sell stocks if we experience a bad market. Think about the person who in 2008 had no cash or conservative bucket and he was forced to sell, sell things at a loss. So essentially that cash, it isn't just a uh, 4% return, but it could be many multiples uh, because it's saving you from recognizing a loss at the wrong time. So that's one way as you're, you're planning things out just to think if you have FOMO, if it's a good market and you've got this cash on the sidelines. So again, hopefully, I always have to say this, where don't take this as advice specific because we're not planning your specific situation, but as you look into it, hopefully this is giving you some thoughts and ideas as we're looking at allocation and portfolio. And I actually have a video coming out soon on how to create an anti-fragile retirement. That's one that's not just protected from bad times, a little bit more detail, but it's also anti-fragile is being able to take advantage of bad times too. So I'll, I'll kind of share how our clients think about it and how we think about it and, and what you can do too. So be subscribed and hit the bell icon so you get notified when that one comes out soon. I believe it's next week. Now we still get to go over past election years and then how the markets reacted. But to sum it up so far, be prepared for possibility of volatility and sensationalized news stories that cause us to worry. And then also AI deepfake videos in mass media. I think that's going to happen, but again, hopefully not, but just be prepared. Step two is review current allocation and then the buckets, right? The, the, the cash and uh, conservative bucket. And then step three is Think about rebalancing if things are way out of whack since you set up your investment plan in the first place. Now, rebalancing, it might not have made sense as you were going through the accumulation years and saving years, because as you look at history, the growth piece of the pie, if you imagine the pie, 
it, the growth piece would be growing and getting larger, right? The, faster than everything else because it's growing the fastest. But when you're closest to or closer to retirement, it could make sense to have more frequent checks and rebalancing to just make sure that things stay in order and are more predictable and in line with the right strategy so that your target uh, investment return or average investment return could be more likely to be achieved. And I know I, if this is all seems to be making sense, but you're not 100% sure about how to implement these strategies, or you're thinking about talking to a retirement team to help you, reach out to us by clicking the link below or going to streamlineplanning.com and, and click get started. Now, here's what really happened every other election year. I'm gonna show, put something up on the screen here. And it's, uh, the questions are, is it better if a Republican gets elected or is it better if a Democrat gets elected? Or what if it, Congress is split or there's gridlock? Let's take a look at this. So this is from First Trust and I'll zoom in here and you could probably take a snapshot too, but this shows the S&P 500 index and what it did each election year going all the way back to 1928. So you can see some of the numbers here of each election year and here's the actual uh, facts. So if a Republican was elected, the average return was 15.3, a Democrat 7.3, so during election years, that's been the average 11.28% uh, during this time period, 1928 to 2016. And some of the key observations here, if you can see this, 19 of the 23 years were good. So pretty interesting to see what happened during election years. Now there's more I wanna show you on, what about uh, if there's Congress is split or there's some sort of gridlock? So as I scroll away from this, you can click the back arrow or the uh, left arrow on your keyboard to rewind and just uh, look at that if you wanted to look at it closer. Uh, or if you skipped to this part of the video, don't miss the part earlier in the video where I talked about what to expect this 2024 election season because it's gonna be, it's, it's important moving forward. So let's take a look at this chart around Congress. When it was a Democratic president and Democratic Congress, here's the results. And then if it was Republican Congress with Democrat, you could kind of see, take the snapshot. And even when there's a split, people worry about gridlock and things like that, but not many things get done. And, and here's just what history has said. And then the same for Republican president. So very interesting. I found this interesting and actually quite, quite positive. Now this doesn't mean every election year is gonna be wonderful. This is just averages over a long period of time. Now let's look at the last chart coming up here in just a second. And then I'll see you next week as I go over the anti-fragile retirement plan. If you're a subscriber, I'll see you there. So this one, as you can see, is down here is, here, I'll zoom in right here. Fully invested, only invest during a Republican president or only invest like that one neighbor of mine or acquaintance. Um, you can see the difference between here's investing only when a Republican's president, only when a Democrat is, or just staying fully invested, what the result is. So it's clear. So hopefully this was helpful as we're going into this election year. They're always interesting. So stay strong and I'll see you in the next video on how to create anti-fragile retirement. Take care.